Understanding how the stack works is extremely essential to understanding how the code is working. So conceptually, the stack is a last in, first out data structure where data is pushed on the top of the stack and then popped off. So frequently people talk about it as if it were a stack of plates where you push something on the top, you push something on the top, but you can't take data out of the middle of the stack. You can only pop something off, pop something off. So in general, the stack is a conceptual area of memory where the operating system says, okay, I'm going to assign this area to be the stack when the program starts running. And different operating systems use different addresses to be the stack. And if they're using address-based layout randomization, it could actually change between different invocations of the program. So again, as I said in the endiness section, I draw low addresses low, high addresses high. So if this is generically some process memory, the operating system decides where it wants to place the stack and where it places the heap, which is where memory is allocated for things like malloc, and where it puts the code and global data and other elements. So by convention, most operating systems have the stack grow towards low addresses. And conversely, the heap will grow towards high addresses. So as you use more heap space and use more stack space, these will grow towards each other. And eventually, if you use too much stack and too much heap, uh, they will collide and the program will take some sort of error and have to be terminated. So I have a very important message brought to you by the M308 gunner from Metal Storm. So Metal Storm is a video game on the Nintendo Entertainment System where you could flip the gravity, go up, go down at a moment's notice. And so the stack grows towards low addresses in our representation. And you, the student, need to be mentally flexible to be able to handle it if the stack is growing down towards lower addresses, or if you go off and see someone else who draws the stack growing towards high addresses. You could also see the stack growing left to right or right to left. The famous hacking paper, Smashing the Stack for Fun and Profit, draws the stack horizontally. So I've also asked Ender Wigan here in order to remind you that the enemy's plate is down. And if you don't believe him, here's another luminary, Weird Al Yankovic, to let you know that everything you know is wrong. Black is white, up is down, and short is long. Now, specifically in the context of the stack on Intel systems, it is the RSP register, the really long stack pointer, which points to the top of the stack. And again, that's the lowest address which is being used to store data. And while data will exist at addresses beyond the top of the stack, it should be considered undefined and it should not be depended upon for program execution behavior. So what kind of information might you find on the stack? First, there's return addresses, which is when a function calls another function, it has to push a return address onto the stack so that the called function knows how to get back to the calling function. So, you know, when you're learning C programming, you know that you can call from one function to the next, but you don't necessarily ever think about how you get back to the calling function and here, when we look at the assembly, we'll understand exactly how that works. Also, local variables are stored on the stack. Sometimes we're going to see parameters passed between two different functions on the stack, but it's going to depend on things we'll learn about later. Also, the stack is a place where the compiler may choose to save registers because at the end of the day, if there's only 16 general purpose registers, then they need to be shared between different functions without them, you know, function one overwriting the values from function two. Also, if a function gets extremely complicated and 16 registers are not enough to juggle all the possible values, then the compiler may need to save them temporarily off to the stack as well. Finally, there are some macros like alloc a, which will just explicitly allocate space on the stack instead of the heap. So in past classes, I sort of tried to draw out a diagram that got into all of those different things right here up front. But for this class, I've decided to try to take it you know, much slower and cover the stack, each of those pieces of the stack as we get into them in future classes. So, so this is going to be a reoccurring diagram, which I'm going to draw and it'll get more complicated over time. But for now, I just want to keep it simple. So if you have a uh, code like this, then when main executes, main will conceptually have an area of space on the stack for itself, which is called its frame. So main's frame is an area on the stack and it may have stuff in it and it may not. It's gonna all depend on things we're gonna learn about later. But when main calls to some other function like foo, then foo will have a conceptual area on the stack for its information, foo's frame. 
And then when foo calls to bar, bar will have a frame as well. And so as functions call to other functions, the stack moves towards lower addresses and new frames get created. And as functions return from other functions, the stack has data coming back off of it and those frames disappear.